What up, peeps? Welcome to the 27th edition of the Goldie Gossip Podcast. I'm your host, Goldie Himalayas. That's right. And we're going to get into this show right now. Hold on, folks. Let me drop that. There we go. And stop that. There we go. And we're going to set up for the program. We'll pop that. Bam. Here. Bam. And we're going to open this up all the way. There we go. Uh Uh-huh. Let's open it up all the way. All right, folks, let's get started with the show. Now, normally, I give you guys, um, you know, my stories. I talk about independent music for you independent artists. And uh, I show my music videos. But this time, it's going to be different. If you guys don't want to rock with financial stability and you don't want to get no game on that if you want to keep it music then this won't be the podcast for you but for those of you who want to get some game and get out of your situation and know that you can get out of your financial situation it's game out here especially with all the social media and uh, I just want to talk about investing on this show so here we go I started investing in the late 90s, but I took a course in futures, commodities, options. I took a course out of Grant Pass, Oregon. His name was Ken Roberts. He was my teacher. And he taught me how to maneuver, how to paper trade, which was the key. If you paper trade and you learn how to do that successfully, then you can actually go in to buying options. But anyways, I made a little money on gold. I made quite a bit of money on gold. Uh, Some soybean oil. Um, I did some live cattle. I didn't do good on the grains. The grains didn't move. It didn't have a lot of volatility. It stayed at one price all the time. So I had to drop the grains. That's not so for the day. But anyways, I dropped out of the game because I, was, I felt as though I was lucky and I wanted to get some more education. But now, I got something for you guys. I've been following a fella by the name of Wall Street Trapper. That's right. He went to jail for 10 years. And during his time in jail, he learned how to trade properly. He learned the ins and outs. And by the time he got out of jail, he had accrued a quarter of a million dollars in portfolio money. So when he got out of jail, he was able to start rocking. And, all right, let me give you the disclaimer now. Nothing that I say should be taken to heart. I am not a financial advisor. Neither is Wall Street Trapper. Investing comes with mitigation. You need to learn how to manage that litigation. And if you can't, you need to consult a financial authority. I'm not a financial authority. And anything on this program, anything that comes out of my mouth or Wall Street Trapper, is strictly for entertainment purposes and informational purposes only. So let's keep that straight. But now without further ado, now normally my podcast is 15 minutes or under because I have a time constriction on some of the social medias. But you know what? They're going to have to do without me. This is important to my people. I want to show you guys or at least point you guys in the right direction 
on how to get some game, how to get out of your financial situation. Because we can do it. The money that black people spend every year is ninth in the world economy, but we just give it back to our oppressors. So I'm going to get you some game, and without further ado, let me hook you up with the Wall Street Trapper. Hold on. Like, yo, Trap, like, people have been asking me, like, Trap, like, you kind of slacked up on, it's not that I really slacked up on the stock talk, like, I'm heavy on the stock talk, I'm heavy on the information talk, I'm heavy on that, I, I can talk about stocks all day, every day, but the goal for me is to understand that, yo, we need more than just stock talk, we need actionable steps to learn how to attain, maintain, and preserve wealth. Investing shouldn't be a short-term gain, but a long-term journey. We need to understand how do we close that wealth gap? How do we get the assets and then protect the assets? Right? Understand that money is a tool, not a goal. I'm going to say that again. Money is a tool, not a goal. You will get market returns all the time. But stock market returns have more to do with the mindset than it actually does with any type of investing skill. Oh, hold up, Trap. How the hell are you going to say something like that? Right, what, do you, what, what, do, what do you mean by that? Stock market returns have more to do, listen to me, y'all, have more to do with the mindset of the investor than the skill set of the investor. So, Trap, what do you mean by, like, Trap? Like, you talking, like, what do you mean, like, how you... How you come up with these, why you be coming up with this, what you talking about, money is a tool, not a goal, we need the money to get where we got to go. True enough, I never said it wasn't, like every tool in the toolbox plays a role. The, the hammer and the nail plays a role. The screw and the screwdriver plays a role. Whether it's the familiarity of trading the same markets as Wall Street or the lower initial investment, there are distinct benefits to day trading. Right? They all play a role. So here's the role for the money. The money is the tool to get you to the assets. The money is the tool to buy back your freedom. The money is the tool to get the assets. The money has no value. The asset has the value. You use the money to get to the asset. I'm telling you why not. I'm telling you why money is the tool and not the goal. You use the money to acquire your freedom. You use the money to buy the assets. The asset is where the value is, not the money. If they printed three trillion dollars in three months, that means everything that you buy has went up in price. That means it's going to cost more money for you to buy something because they've implemented more money into the system. If they put more money into the system, then the cost of the, the value of the dollar keeps going down. So the money, if they can print three trillion dollars out of thin air, then that money has no value. The real value is in the assets that you can buy with the money. The man don't care about printing money. He just showed you that. He's going to print money to keep the economy from falling. So why will we be chasing the money? They got us chasing something that ain't worth nothing when they accumulating all the assets. Why? Money is a tool, not a goal. Of course you need money to pay bills. Of course you need this to do that. Of course you need this to do that. But what if you started using the money to get the assets and the assets pay for that? Then you will no longer have to chase the money. You can chase the freedom because the freedom becomes more important. I ask you this question, of your 24 hours, how much of it do you own? I'm so thankful every day that I can say that I own my 24 hours. The goal for me is because once I saw how powerful it was for me to own my 24 hours, I'm like, yo, I got to start teaching my people how to own their 24 hours. Money is a tool, not a goal. And so now we start digging into the different asset classes. Trap, are you against crypto? No, it's another asset class to help me buy back my freedom. Trap, are you against real estate? No, it's another asset class to help me buy back my freedom. Trap, are you against trading? No, I'm not. It's another asset. It's another tool in the tool belt to help me buy back my freedom. Stocks is my go-to. It's what I love. But 
every asset is worth more than the money because the money is a tool, not a goal. Freedom is the goal. The highest form of wealth is being able to do whatever you want to do with your life. The highest form of wealth is saying, I own my 24 hours. If you ask any successful person, if you ask any successful person what was their greatest investment, they won't say stocks, they won't say real estate, they won't say crypto. They'll say the greatest investment I ever made was the investment in myself. Because the investment in myself, where every other investment you make after that is just a dividend from the investment in yourself. I'm gonna say it again. Every other, every asset you buy or every asset you attain after the investment in yourself is really only a dividend from that investment. You feel me? So also let's talk about something, man. Investing, investing is necessary to do what? Build wealth. Why is investing necessary to build wealth? Why is investing necessary to build wealth? Because I'm going to keep it a buck with you. It is impossible for you to work and bust your ass to get wealthy. It won't happen. You actually need your money to be working harder for you than you work for it. The only way you'll get to wealth is if your money is working twice as hard for you. Well, try why that's the only way. Because no matter how hard you work, you can't outwork the money. We've only been conditioned to work for money. We've only been conditioned to work for money. So now we got to start understanding the concept of, yo, like, how are these people living their lives? One, the wealth that you want, the life that you want doesn't happen overnight. So we got to start putting in the work. But also, so people keep talking about the family SOPs. Family SOPs was something I put into place. It's something I'm writing. I'm coming up. It's going to be a blueprint for how we attain wealth, yo. It's going to be a blueprint for how we attain wealth. Because what I've learned and what I've realized is this, right? You see rich people go broke all the time. But you never heard of wealthy people losing the wealth. We never heard it. We don't hear that. Like, we just know wealthy people be having wealth for generation after generation after. You be like, damn, like, they just, they people just got money. Like, you just don't understand, like, yo, them people just got money. They just got bread. Damn, that shit in the family. So how do we now start putting things in place, systems in place to assure that each family member, each generation, I often say that each generation is uh, responsible for the next generation. Right, what happens is everybody is worried about themselves. Like, how do I get straight? How do I get good? How do I make sure we good? If each generation now is responsible for the next generation, what trap? How is it that this generation is going to respond for the next generation? Easy. Family SOPs got to be put in place. Family SOPs got to be put in place. Well, wait a minute, Trap. Like, what the hell is this SOP? Standard operating procedures, leveraging life insurance, infinite banking, showing us how to put place together for ourselves. I made a post today that said PTC, private trust company. Trap. What the hell is a private trust company? Well, what happens is when you get a trust, you got to have trustees. Well, because human nature says somebody may get a little greedy when they see you got a million dollars, two million dollars. The family now creates their own trust. And now what happens is, right, hear me out. The family creates their own trust. The trust now, the family becomes the clients of the trust and the trust becomes the trustee. Hey guys, are you here to learn about? And so now everything now is aligned under the trust. So if somebody gets sued, somebody gets something. Okay, you can sue me. I only make $10 an hour. You can't sue me because you, you sue me. I don't own nothing. The trust has everything. Own nothing, control everything. PTC, private family trust. I get it. Like, I get it. I, I was like, yo, I understand it. Like, and I'm going to be real with y'all. Like, I love the stock market. It helped me attain my freedom. 
it helped me to start teaching this game to my people. But then I started telling myself, like, yo, it's bigger than that. That's where the Wall Street looks like us now come from. It's bigger than that. Like, we we got to, we all have a duty. Everybody in the financial literacy, have, everybody in the financial literacy space has a duty. These wealthy families, they make a lot of money. Right? They make a lot of money, but they secure it. They make sure each family understands their role in the legacy. One of the things, I'm going to say this, y'all. One of the things that's been amazing for me is that a lot of people from a lot of ethnic groups outside of black people have not intrigued that you got this black man just talking like this and talking about stocks. I'm going to be real with y'all. Like, I, I put something up the other day. I said, yo, I'm like the spook that sat by the door. You know what I'm saying? And people was like, you know, a lot of people was like, man, what y'all talking about? I'm in that, you hear me? For sure, right? <laughs> Um, so what I did was I started leveraging it. Like I started talking to him. I started like, yeah, so tell me about this and, and tell me about this and I'm doing this. And so they want to talk to me about stocks. I'm like, all right, cool. Cause they intrigued that I'm talking that type of language. And so one of the other things I did was I was like, all right, let me just start leveraging what I know to understand what they know so I can get that game and bring that back to my people. You hear me? You know what I'm saying? So I just been getting game and I'm like, all right, cool. The best way me, the best way for me to learn the game is to go.